Hey students, it's Mr. Yurgert. I wanted to talk to you about something important. It is Banned Books Week coming up this next week. I'm recording this on a Friday, so you might watch this during Banned Books Week. Uh, Banned Books Week this week is September 27th through October 3rd, 2020. Uh, and Banned Books Week is a celebration of our First Amendment rights. It is a celebration of our freedom guaranteed by the First Amendment to the Constitution that we are able to access ideas and books. Uh, Banned Books Week, guys, is a week-long celebration started by the American Library Association, or the ALA, in 1982, and it has been celebrated every year since. Uh, it is an outward expression of resistance. Uh, it's an expression of resistance to censorship and extinguishing the fires of curiosity. A person who wants to get rid of books is not a person who has your best interest in mind. Uh, additionally, just about every good book that's ever been written has been uh, challenged or banned. Uh, things like the, every classic book that you can think of, every book that's widely respected, even the Bible is one of the most challenged and banned books of all time. Uh, so let's see a little bit more about this. How does a book get banned? Well. Step one is that a book is good. There must be something about this book that people like. People wouldn't care about a book enough to try to ban it if a book wasn't good enough for people to seek out. So usually this comes in kind of a grassroots form. Uh, maybe teachers get a lot of requests for a book from their classroom library. Maybe we have a waiting list for a book. Uh, sometimes it might be that a bookstore uh, sells out of it. Libraries get a bunch of requests for it. Uh, schools get requests to provide the book or online sales are just through the roof. However, it is some attention has to be drawn to the book. Step two is that a book has to have some kind of content that someone objects to. Uh, this could be a very, very wide variety of things. And if you look at the uh, 100 most banned books of all time, it's basically anything. Uh, this could be a character that they don't like. Uh, it could be an illustration that they think is graphic or sometimes pornographic. Uh, it could be a theme that they think is harmful. Um, but in recent years, more than 50% of all challenges are due to the inclusion of LGBT content. And this itself could be pretty wide. Uh, it could be a theme that promotes uh, that being gay is not something that's bad. Uh, it could be visibility of people who are transgender. It could be the inclusion of a fictional same-sex relationship. It could be many different things. Um, but step two, someone's got to dislike something about that book and think that people shouldn't read it. Step three is that that person tries to remove access to the book. Now, this is called challenging a book. Uh, this could be done a wide variety of ways. Uh, maybe someone goes to a school board member and they don't like the book that's on a reading list. Uh, let's say I'm teaching Huckleberry Finn and they don't like the inclusion of racial language in that book. And they go to the school board member and they ask, can the teachers not teach that book anymore? Maybe they go to your library and they ask the librarian to remove the book from the shelves. Maybe they come into my classroom or send a note with their students and ask that a book be taken out of my classroom library. They might even go to a local politician and make a stink about it and try to get on the news, something like that. However they do it, they ask the book to be taken out of wide access or taken off shelves. Now, 66% of challenges happen in public libraries, like the one in your neighborhood. Uh, that's the largest majority. 19% happen in school libraries, uh, specifically the library section with a librarian. 12% uh, happen in school. So that could be either in my classroom, that could be uh, in a reading list that we have. 2% uh, happen in academia, that's gonna be higher education, like a college or university. And then 1% happens in special libraries or prison libraries. Now these are based on uh, 377 responses uh, to the ALA's report in uh, 2019, which is the most recent data we have for that right now. Uh, here's a wordle about the reasons for challenges. Uh, I'm gonna move my, my little pick down here. Uh, the bigger the word is on here, the more often it has been cited as a reason for banning. So LGBTQIA plus content is uh, the number one uh, followed by political viewpoints or sexually explicit content, uh, but it's a lot, a lot of stuff. So what happens if that person challenges a book? There's kind of two ways that it could go. 
Step four, the last step in a book getting banned, is that it's removed from wide access for people. It's taken off of reading lists. Maybe we, we don't teach the book in 10th grade English anymore. Uh, it's taken out of the library. Note, this is generally done not with malice. Uh, it's done to avoid a controversy, to avoid trouble, so that someone isn't afraid that they're going to lose their job or something like that. But the result is censorship. People no longer have access to information that they previously had access to and want access to. So we could take number four a different way. Uh, perhaps the book doesn't get banned. Perhaps someone steps up and instead the book is saved. A person aware of the dangers of censorship approaches the American Library Association and says this book has been challenged. So the ALA provides anti-censorship strategies for people. They provide talking points. Uh, they provide reading materials. Uh, just about every graphic you've seen in this video has been provided by the ALA. They even provide legal advice. And in some rare cases, they provide legal representation if a person was uh, to have legal action taken against them. Uh, this is a little graphic of what challenges look like. Now, there were 91 challenges in 2017. So this, this data is a little bit old, but I don't have a more recent graphic for it. There were 91 challenges that were public, meaning they made a news, uh, news report or something like that. There were 354 included in the ALA's field report for that year, uh, saying that those books were uh, brought to the ALA as something that has been challenged. Uh, and some are confidential because you don't want a librarian to lose their job uh, in their community. But the really scary part is that bottom part of the pyramid, the silent challenges. A silent challenge is if someone were to come to say a teacher or librarian and they say, I don't like this book. It has this content that I object to and I want you to take it out of circulation. If, for example, we feared for our jobs or, or we trusted uh, that that person was just very well-meaning or we didn't feel strongly about it, whatever the reason is, if we removed that book from circulation and did not report it, that's a silent challenge, meaning censorship has taken place and there has been, uh, there's been no noise made about it. So those are the vast majority of them. We actually don't know how many silent challenges every year, but the ALA is confident that there are far more silent challenges than there are reported challenges. This is uh, the updated graphic this year from the ALA for the most, uh, most challenged books of 2019. Uh, as you can see, almost all of them are due to LGBT content. Uh, George by Alex Gino, LGBTQ, Beyond Magenta by Susan Kuklin, LGBTQIA, uh, Marlon Bondo, LGBTQIA, literally almost everything uh, has LGBT content except for maybe The Handmaid's Tale and the Harry Potter series. Um, I remember when I was in the second grade, Harry Potter was taken out of our schools uh, and you couldn't get it there anymore. Um, I have a couple of resources for students in this presentation, which I'm going to put up on Google Classroom, uh, but I wanted to include this quote here. Had I had a book like that on the shelf, I might have realized a lot sooner that I could love myself. I might have realized a lot sooner that it's okay to be different. Uh, this was a community member's response on keeping the book Prince and Knight on a public library shelves. Uh, guys, representation really matters. Seeing yourself reflected back in art in a positive way, that's something that you really can't put a price on. And it's important to keep these things in free resources like schools and libraries because not everybody can afford uh, a $25 book on Amazon.com. Uh, I have a couple more resources for LGBTQ content. Basically, uh, it's, it's all we got these years. Uh, there's so much LGBTQ content that is challenged that uh, goes on. Uh, there are resources all over, including your, your local high school teacher, uh, stuff on CNN, Mental Floss, uh, Time. If you want to learn more about Banned Books Week and, uh, and find out about what's going on, you can Google Banned Books Week. You can use the American Library Association's official Banned Book Week week site. Uh, you can talk to a teacher or a librarian. The point is, guys, though, read a banned book because banned books are good and reading is power.